Chicago Bears general manager Ryan Poles sure was busy on the opening day of free agent negotiations. He signed a handful of players, was involved in a heck of a lot more negotiations, but the one thing they all had in common, young and ascending players. You are Locked On Bears, your daily Chicago Bears podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Locked On Bears, and I'm your host, Lauren Cox. I'm here to bring you your daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. You can follow me on Twitter at Cox Sports One. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On Bears. You can like Locked On Bears on Facebook. Join the Locked On Bears Facebook group for even more Bears talk. And make sure you hit that subscribe button on the Locked On Bears YouTube channel to keep up with all of our video podcasts as well. Thanks for making Locked On Bears your first listen today. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And on the show today, your team has been very busy to start free agent negotiations. A new offensive lineman to block for Justin Fields. A new pass rusher late in the day that maybe wasn't the headliner Bears fans were looking for, but a player with some versatility and upside that we still need to kind of sort through here. And the big splash, the linebacker position, double dipping with an Edwards and an Edmonds. I think you're going to see a lot of Bears fans and media getting those two mixed up or typoing between the two of them, not because they look that similar, but just because their last names are the same, are very similar and they both start with a T, but they both start Ryan Poles' free agent spending off big. Edwards was the first one on a more reasonable three-year, $19.5 million deal and Tremaine Edmonds, the big money spending at four years and almost $18 million a year, $72 million contract with $50 million of that guaranteed. It is a lot of money to spend on an off-ball linebacker after the Chicago Bears opted not to with Roquan Smith and instead traded him to the Baltimore Ravens for a second-round pick. Roquan Smith got his $20 million a year from Baltimore. The Bears instead opted to, between Tremaine Edmonds and TJ Edwards, will be spending about $24 million on those two linebackers, plus the second-round pick they got back for Roquan Smith. To me, this was a sign that it wasn't that the Bears just didn't value the inside linebacker position, but it was clearly they didn't value Roquan Smith, that they put a certain valuation on Roquan and said, hey, we'll pay you this much. Roquan wanted more. My feelings got hurt. It got untenable, and ultimately he got traded. And I think they went out on the free agent market and kind of gave a similar deal to what they were offering Roquan to Tremaine Edmonds, who is a similar speed type athlete at linebacker. He's not as good as Roquan Smith at this stage of his career. He struggled quite a bit early in his time with the Buffalo Bills. But his final season just this past year in 2022 was clearly his best. He was a guy coming out of college that was talked about with the Bears first round pick the same year as Roquan Smith. They were in that same linebacker class of freak athletes. Edmonds much bigger at like what, 6'4", 250 odd pounds. But the thing with Edmonds was like, he didn't have quite the same football IQ instincts, you know, reading, reacting, diagnosing plays on the field. He was more just the raw, the raw or the more raw freak athlete at linebacker that you think bring him into our system and he'll develop and grow. And eventually those physical tools will match with the mental tools and boom, you'll be off to the races. It felt like this season was that first year where it started to really click the most for him. And he's not just running around out there like a chicken with his head cut off, but like really, really settling into his role in the NFL. And that's where I think the Bears found some confidence to be able to invest long term in him because like you look at the contract they gave him because it's $50 million guaranteed. Essentially, they, they have the, the year one cap hit a little bit on the lower side at, at $15 million. Next year, it'll be 22, then 17, 17. They're locked in for these first two years for sure. Then in 2025, they have the possibility of getting out of it, but there would be a lot of dead cap money from there. And then after 2025, that's a little bit more flexible for them. So they're, they're locked in and making him one of the centerpieces of this Bears defense. And he'll plug right in that will linebacker spot next to their new middle linebacker. T.J. Edwards coming over from the Philadelphia Eagles. We've talked about both of these linebackers a little bit 
on the podcast this offseason as potential linebacker targets for the Bears. Edwards, much like Jack Sanborn, an undrafted rookie free agent out of Wisconsin. And I double-checked, I don't think they were actually there at the same time. I think Edwards' last season was right before Sanborn's freshman year. So I don't think they were technically college teammates, but played in the same system, the same terminology. And man, I covered TJ Edwards in college. I've interviewed him many times. Genuinely nice human being. Really just relaxed, down-to-earth, chill dude. Doesn't take himself too seriously. But of course, like, knows a lot about the sport of football. I remember his defensive coordinators trusted him like the like the captain on the field. I mean, like he could run the defense and they would trust him to do whatever he needed to do out there and could know that he was going to be in the right place at the right time. So that even when he had physical limitations, which is, I think, part of where he goes undrafted, because he's not fast. He's not, you know, horribly slow, but he's not fast. I mean, we're talking Nick Kwiatkowski, Sanborn level speed, but because he's got the instincts, because he sees the field so well and can read and diagnose and attack quickly, he can make up for some of that lack of speed because he's going he's gonna to make that first step faster than someone like Tremaine Edmonds, who is clearly a faster human being, but might not see it and react quite as quickly as TJ Edwards. So maybe they can both end up there at about the same place. Both guys really settling in their own in coverage this season. Both guys getting a better feel and better sense for that. And I think from a scheme fit standpoint, the Bears defense is going to ask them to play a lot of zone coverage. And that's going to mean that a, TJ Edwards isn't going to need to turn and run in man-to-man coverage against fast tight ends or, heaven forbid, wide receivers coming over the middle of the field. And also, Tremaine Edmonds can keep his eyes on the ball, eyes in the backfield, eyes on the quarterback, and attack downhill and read and react. So I think, scheme fit-wise, both of these linebackers are going to be great fits in this defense. And you can still have Jack Sanborn, as of now, as your Sam linebacker, your number three starting inside linebacker in base defense, he's on the field. You go into your nickel packages and it's Edwards and Edmonds. And you're feeling like the Bears linebacking core is better right now than it was last season. Is it better than it would be if Roquan Smith was still here? We'll see how that plays out. I think it'll depend on what you get in the defensive line in front of them, which is something Bears fans wanted to see more of on the opening day of free agency as we start to get a little bit impatient with Draymond Jones going off the board to the Seattle Seahawks. Javon Hargrave goes to the San Francisco 49ers. Zach Allen goes to the Denver Broncos. And this musical chairs game of defensive linemen pass rushers starts to run out the clock and the Bears are left there without a chair. They finally get Demarcus Walker from the Tennessee Titans at the end of the day. And as we stand right now, I'm not sure whether he's going to be a defensive end in the Bears edge rushers in the Bears system or a three-technique defensive tackle, or maybe some combination of both. We'll look at how his skill set fits into this Chicago Bears defense and how they might use him next on Locked On Bears. The Locked On Bears podcast is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use, especially for March Madness season. You may have your bracket already filled out, and if you want to bet on some of those games, put your college basketball knowledge to the test. FanDuel is going to be a great way to play. Plus, NFL draft bets, XFL bets, NFL futures, NBA season, and so much more. So don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash Locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA and NFL. We thought the Bears might come out of the gate swinging in free agency on a pass rusher, some sort of defensive lineman, because that clearly on paper is and was their biggest need entering free agency. They definitely need at least one new starting defensive end and one new starting defensive tackle. And ideally, two more of each that might not all come in free agency and that might not all come at all. But like we got through the end of the the regular, you know, normal people business day on Monday while the NFL business day never sleeps and the Bears didn't have one. And we watched the big name guys, all the guys that Bears fans wanted. You know, first Deron Payne comes off on, on on a franchise tag and that's that's out of the equation. And I don't remember the exact order that all the different free agents ended up signing, but it was like one after another. Hargrave has gone to the 49ers. Uh, we see 
Of course, Draymond Jones goes, Zach Allen goes, Marcus Davenport, the defensive end, goes to the Minnesota Vikings. The nose tackle, Dalvin Tomlinson, ended up signing late last night as well. And it's just like one after another, these names keep coming off of the board and the Bears don't have any of them. Then we finally get Demarcus Walker. And that's a name that I think a lot of Bears fans found themselves saying, who? Who's that guy? DeMar- De- not, not Demarcus Lawrence, Demarcus Walker, you know, uh, not super familiar with him is, is I, th- I think the reaction that a lot of people came away with because, you know, he hasn't been someone who's made a name for himself in a way that demanded you know who he is, right? I mean, he's he was a second round pick by the Broncos back in 2017, but really underwhelmed through his first handful of seasons there, left and spent a year with the Houston Texans before signing with the Tennessee Titans this offseason. If I if I've got the timeline correctly, he was yeah he signed a one year deal with the Texans and then finished that season on IR and played for the Titans this past season and had a career high seven sacks and all of a sudden you're like okay there's a little bit of production there his previous career high was four and a half before that so we're not looking at a guy who's like a bona fide proven pass rusher he he's largely been throughout his career a rotational player you know he's played you know you look across his seasons in the NFL. This past year, he played 427 snaps. The year before, 458, and then 384, 220. If you think about there being a little over 1,000 snaps per season on defense, he's playing 40 to 45% of the total defensive snaps the last couple of seasons. That's a guy who's not quite a starter, but a borderline starter rotating in that starting lineup. And the Bears certainly didn't give him, like, you know, top dollar starter money in that way. I think it came out to be a three-year, $21 million contract with $16 million guaranteed. So, you know, there's good, there's uh, some money there to expect him to have a big role, but it's not like they're paying him like he's going to be some 10 sack guy just yet. But it's not super clear to me for sure that he's going to line up on the edge and be an edge rusher for the Chicago Bears, because you look at how he was used throughout his career he has not been married to one spot in that way to where I think the Bears might not have even signed him with an intentional permanent spot in mind that, you know, this past season with the Tennessee Titans, he played more of that Akeem Hicks five technique, three, four defensive end role, right? Where you're, you're not quite an edge rusher, not quite a three technique, you're, you're in between. And there were times when he could bump over and rush the edge. And there were times when he would kick inside and be a three technique defensive tackle for them. He rushed kind of up up and down the defensive line for them, even played some nose tackle for them. So what he did this past season strikes you as more of a three technique type mold. And he's what, 6'4", 280 pounds, like that fits the bill. Or he could be a bigger, stronger, heavier edge rusher, which is what he did more early in his career in Houston. He was drafted as an edge rusher and is still sort of being talked about and thought of almost exclusively as an edge rusher. But that's, you look at his snaps by position where he's played, he has not been significantly more at edge in the last couple of seasons than than the interior defensive pass rushing spots. If anything, he's played more three technique than edge rusher over the last couple of seasons. And if not more, it's it's really close. I didn't do the I didn't add up all the little numbers for all the different positions, but rough math in your head cl- was so it showed like not more than like 60 40 in either direction. He's really positionally versatile in both ways. Now, now you don't sign him to a seven million dollar a year contract to you know, to only just use him as a rotational guy off the bench at both spots. Like he's going to start somewhere and we'll see perhaps what other options they end up finding at free in free agency and in the NFL draft that could determine that, you know, if they go through and they sign an, ed- an edge rusher. Like I think we saw one report that the Bears were interested in a Samson Ebukam from the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, and I think actually he played with the uh, the San Francisco 49ers this past season, but he started his career yeah, started his career at the Rams, spent the last two years with the 49ers as their starting out uh, defensive end. There were some rumors that the Bears may, may be interested in him. Maybe by the time you listen to this podcast, he'll either be with the Bears or sign with someone else. I'm not going to spend today talking a lot about best available free agents because they're going to be gone. They're just going to go too fast. And podcast is not a fast enough medium to get those names out there to you and still have it be relevant to you when we listen. But so if the Bears sign an edge rusher like Samson Ibukam, then... That would mean Demarcus Walker is going to play more three technique. Or if the Bears go out and sign another defensive tackle on the interior, then maybe that means Demarcus Walker is going to end up playing more of the edge spot. Or maybe we don't know until they get to the NFL draft and you get to the ninth overall pick. And are they drafting 
maybe Jalen Carter or Kalijah Cansey from Pittsburgh as defensive tackles, and then maybe Demarcus Walker's playing edge. Or if they're at that spot and Lucas Van Ness is there from Iowa, or maybe even Tyree Wilson or some of these other edge rushers, does that mean Demarcus Walker is inside? Or do you pair Demarcus Walker and Lucas Van Ness as a, as a combo there? And we still have no idea whether either one is a three technique or an edge rusher because they can both play both spots, have both played significant snaps at both spots. And all of a sudden, maybe that's harder for defenses to prepare for, but you're also going real big and heavy at that edge spot and not, not a lot of speed from either one of those guys. It doesn't mean they're not good. It just limits you in terms of the skill set that you might have at that at the spot that's a really important key on the defensive line to be able to you know chase down runs from behind and certainly set edges on the front side and have some speed around the edge for the quarterback. Walker is a $16 million guaranteed out of a $21 million contract on a three-year deal. So that's going to mean his first two years are pretty well locked in as guaranteed. He's going to be here for two seasons. And then after that second season, the Bears can likely move on from them if they want to. But we got two full years of Demarcus Walker. So now your D-line right now is Travis Gibson, Justin Jones, Demarcus Walker, and question mark. The Bears are still going to need to do more on this defensive line. And I'm expecting some kind of free agent signing somewhere. Maybe it's a nose tackle. Maybe it's an edge rusher. Maybe it's a three technique. If it happens on Tuesday, you can be sure we'll break it down on, on Wednesday's podcast. Might still be expecting some kind of offensive line signing. There was another one where we saw some of the top players come off of the board and I think a lot of Bears fans were getting on getting on edge a little bit and wondering where their big free agent signing is going to be. Still some big names out there, at least a couple of decent names out there as, as I'm recording this Monday night, but they did get their guard in Nate Jones. Maybe a little bit of a surprise there. And for me, I like Nate Jones as a signing, spoiler alert, but it does leave me with more questions than answers on what this Bears offensive line is going to look like, at least until we get some other potential free agent signing to clear some of that up. So we'll look at the different possibilities of Nate Jones at left guard, Nate Jones at right guard, and what that might mean for Cody Whitehair and Tevin Jenkins' future with the Chicago Bears. That's next on Locked on Bears. The Locked on Bears podcast is powered by our friends at Built Bar, the makers of the world's best tasting protein bars. And right now we're having some fun with Built Bar because they have put together a Built Bar March Madness Bracket. I have my favorite Built Bars and Built Puffs. If you've tried Built Bar, you have your favorites as well. And now it's your time to make it count. Go to BuiltMarchMadness.com to vote for your favorite flavors of Built Bars. I'm going to be voting for the Brownie Chunk. I'm going to be voting for the Coconut Puffs and pretty much any flavor that has cookie dough in it, although two of those go head-to-head in the first round of their bracket, which is very, very difficult to me. But if you go to Built Bracket or BuiltMarchMadness.com, and vote for your favorite bar or puff, you'll be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky Locked On listeners will get a free box of Built Bars. Not only that, but one Locked On listener will get a 12-month subscription to Built to have Built's best bars or puffs delivered monthly straight to your door. You can enter in once a day throughout the month of March. I'm going to be entering in every day to try and get that free one-year subscription to Built Bar because I eat them every day. They are so good and yet somehow so good for you. Low sugar, low calories, high fiber, high protein. They taste like candy bars, and that's why you got to vote for them. You got to vote for your favorite candy tasting protein bar. That's builtmarchmadness.com right now to vote for your favorite built bar or puff and pick up a box while you're there. The Chicago Bears picked up an offensive lineman. It wasn't exactly the one we had thought of or one of the main ones that was at the top of the list for a lot of Bears fans. I do think Nate Davis is a really good fit. He's a solid run blocker. It's a similar scheme. He's good at getting up to that second level and holds up pretty well in pass protection as well. The Titans run, you know, come from that similar offensive tree of the Shanahan-ish scheme. You know, they, everyone has their own tweaks and adjustments, but like he's he's solid, right? He's a quality guard and to get him for three years, $30 million without crazy guaranteed money in there is is a really good deal for the Bears. It's a, it's a solid signing when you're seeing other teams go out and spend big time, you know, 18, 20 million dollars a year on, you know, Jawan Taylor gets 20 million a year from the Kansas City Chiefs, who I know a lot of Bears fans liked. They signed him to play left tackle. And then, you know, Mike McGlinchey goes to the Denver Broncos for like, was it 18 ish million dollars a year on that contract? Ben Powers also goes to the Denver Broncos, one of the guards from the Ravens on a big deal. So like generally the Bears got pretty good value, all things considered, on someone like Nate Davis. But when the Bears sign a guy who spent the last four seasons, four or five seasons, starting at right guard for the Tennessee Titans and has not played left guard in the NFL, 
Doesn't mean he can't do it, but has not been asked to do it up to this point. Right away, we ask, well, wait a minute. Where does he fit in this Chicago Bears offensive line? Because as the roster stands right now, Monday night, you got Braxton Jones under contract at left tackle, Cody Whitehair under contract at left guard, uh, Lucas Patrick under contract at center, question mark for now, uh, and uh, Tevin Jenkins locked under contract right now at right guard, and then the right tackle spot is open. I don't see a, a guy like um, Nate Davis as someone who's going to like kick over to right tackle, right? He's he's a guard. So then does Tevin Jenkins go from right guard to right tackle? Or does Nate Davis go into left guard and now we're just waiting for Cody Whitehair to be cut and be a salary cap casualty? Because the Bears would save quite a bit of money. I want to say like 12, 10 or $12 million in salary cap space if they released Cody Whitehair. But Cody Whitehair still played pretty well last season, right? He wasn't, maybe he wasn't, as good as he was at his absolute peak and more closer to his prime. You know, he is on the wrong side of 30. He's what, or just turned 30 in, or about to turn 31 in July, I guess, turned 30 last season. So he's not old, but he's not young. And he's not like way overpriced, but he's not cheap. And so like, I don't know, I'm not in a hurry to get rid of Cody Whitehair. That's, that's, where, I, that's where I kind of feel like, am I going to think, am I going to be upset and think it's this terrible decision that the Bears made and like be, you know, throw a fit or whatever? No. But I don't understand, like, right, the Bears have holes on the offensive line. Before free agency started, you could say, okay, they're set at right guard. They've got a left guard who's pretty good, a, a young left tackle who's ascending, and then you need a right tackle, and you would like to have a better center. Why then sign a guard to then cut your left guard and not have fixed anything, just took something that was already settled and resettled it and really kind of whatever money you save from Cody Whitehair goes to pay for Nate Davis's contract. So I guess you're, you're maybe you feel like it's a slight upgrade for certainly a much younger player. Nate Davis is like 26 years old. So you get younger there, but that's, you didn't fix any of your offensive line problems there. So that's why I'm, I would, it doesn't feel like cutting Cody Whitehair just to, to sign Nate Davis or sign Nate Davis just to cut Cody Whitehair, especially because they didn't cut Cody Whitehair ahead of time and didn't cut him right away and still haven't made that. I mean, unless there's a chance he could be traded for a late round draft pick at best, but that seems pretty unlikely to me. So that would point then in theory to Nate Davis goes to right guard. Tevin Jenkins goes to right tackle. Tevin Jenkins played so well at right guard last season that I know a lot of Bears fans don't want to move him. Say, no, he played well there. Why, why? disrupt a good thing there, get a right tackle instead. All the guards are cheaper. So there's, I mean, there's one thing. And the other thing that I, that I point to here is Ryan Poles did an interview and he did so many interviews around the combine. I can't remember which one it was. I don't know if it was press conference. I don't know if it was, I think it might've been a CHGO interview. It could have been NBC sports, Chicago, or, or I mean, pro football talk on NBC. I don't remember, but he was asked about a player or something since he took over his GM that he, that he realized he was wrong about, that, that, that he saw in Kansas City and then came to Chicago and realized now that he's in Chicago that he was wrong about it in Kansas City. And what he said was he, was he realized that he was wrong about Tevin Jenkins' ability to play guard, that he didn't, from Kansas, when he was in Kansas City, he didn't think Tevin Jenkins would project very well inside the guard and thought he would be a right tackle when Poles was in Kansas City, but then came to Chicago, got to work with him, saw he could play guard well and, and did so. But does that, does that tell me, like if you read between the lines there, is that him saying he still thinks Tevin Jenkins should be a right tackle? Because, yes, he played well at guard, but the plan was right tackle. That's what he thought coming in, and that he can always go back inside to guard, I guess, if they need him to, but the plan is to go back to right tackle. That's When they signed the guard, that, that was what popped back into my mind right away, was, was that quote from him saying, yeah, we were surprised how well Jenkins could do at guard. We thought of him as a tackle. Does that mean they still think of him as a tackle? He didn't use those exact words, but like that's what it sounds like to me, the way he said it is like, yeah, we thought he was a tackle. So then does that mean he goes back to offensive tackle? Or is there some wild dark horse possibility out here that like, given how Tevin Jenkins wanted a trade in training camp and maybe he and Ryan Poles didn't quite mend the fence as well as you want. I mean, could they trade Tevin Jenkins and try and get some value and just plug in Nate Davis at that spot and go with white hair and, and Davis seems very unlikely to me, but I guess we can't rule it out given it's been less than six months, wait, a little over six months, I guess it would have been August. So barely six months since 
Tevin Jenkins was unhappy and wanted out of Chicago. And I guess we don't really know exactly how he feels about his long-term fit here. I, I don't bring it up to like, you know, stir the pot or like, you know, try and throw out conspiracy theories or something. I'm just looking for an explanation here as to Nate Davis being the signing right away on the offensive line. Cause he's got to go at one of the guard spots. Both the guard spots are filled. Somebody has got to go somewhere and it doesn't, the thing that would make the most sense football wise, I think then would be to move Jenkins to right tackle to try and then feel like you've solved that position and that you have one less hole to fill that that's to me, what I would think would happen, but the white hair thing wouldn't surprise me and I wouldn't hate it. It just doesn't seem like it solves the problem at that point. It just moves a problem around and still leaves you a hole at right tackle. There are still offensive tackles available for the bears. Again, I don't want to spend a bunch of podcast time talking about available free agents because they may come off the board by the time you're listening to this or by the time I'm done recording this. But like as of Monday night, Orlando Brown from the chiefs still available, but has told teams I'm playing left tackle. I am not playing right tackle. Bears could sign him, I guess, and put Braxton Jones at right tackle as a possibility there. Caleb McGarry is still unsigned after this point. And a couple other guys like, uh, you know, the lesser guys, Isaiah Wynn, Jermaine Elamuner, Cameron Fleming, I think is still out there. So there's some options there at right tackle. The centers are quickly, quickly drying up. But I think the Bears are probably going to roll with Lucas Patrick there. And of course, there's also the NFL draft, right? The ninth overall pick could be a pass rusher, like we talked about in the last segment. Could be an offensive tackle, a right tackle, a left tackle. A guy like Peter Skronsky has some guard versatility as well. They've, the Bears have options. And I think that's how Ryan Poles is going about this. He's not panicking and saying, I got to get a right tackle right now because if I don't get one, then I'm screwed. He's saying, well, no, we negotiated with Mike McGlinchey. We didn't want to go that high. You know, we negotiated with these players. We didn't want to go that high on the defensive line with some of these other guys. I've got options here. There's other players we like. We've got draft picks. We're not going to panic. We're not going to overspend on everybody just to get everybody, but we're going to go get our Tremaine Edmonds because, well, we need linebackers and we're not going to draft one with the ninth overall pick and not, don't want to rely on a rookie necessarily if you, if you could avoid it in the middle of this Bears defense. So it's all part of this process that I guess uh, I'll preach patience, right? I'm, not, I'm never going to preach, hey, love every move Ryan Poles makes and accept it at face value because GMs never get anything wrong because, of course, GMs get things wrong all the time and Many free agent signings don't pan out. So I'm not going to disagree with anybody who dislikes a signing or thinks it was a bad signing by any means. But let's also give Ryan Poles a chance to make all his moves before we criticize him for the holes that are still left on the roster, right? If you watch people on Twitter, man, free agency has been open for five hours and they're going, Ryan Poles is blowing it. Why don't they have a right tackle? Why don't they have a pass rusher? Why don't they have this, this or that? It's like, let's... It hasn't even been 24 hours yet. It's been 12 hours, but as I'm recording this podcast on Monday night, like there's a lot of free agency left and a lot more players still to join your Chicago Bears. Whoever they sign, you can be sure we'll break it all down for you right here on the Lockdown Bears podcast. So make sure you hit that subscribe button wherever you listen to podcasts or on the Lockdown Bears YouTube channel to keep up with all of our video podcasts as well. Thanks for making Lockdown Bears your first listen today. If you're looking for your second listen, Boy, have I been on some Locked On podcasts. <laughs> I was on. I was one of the co-hosts of Locked On NFL today. We spent the first segment talking about the Bears and the Broncos as the big free agent spenders. We talked about how Aaron Rodgers is holding the Packers and the Jets hostage, and we laugh at them. That's a lot of fun. And we talk about Jimmy Garoppolo to the Raiders and what the heck the Raiders are doing with their situation. So you can check out Locked On NFL for more free agency talk. I was a guest on Locked On Sports today, talking about all the big Bears moves as well. And how this free agent class is starting to play out for Ryan Pohl. So lots of more Bears content for you across the Locked On Podcast Network. We are your team every day. Tomorrow, we'll break down any big name signings the Bears might make on a Tuesday. And, and once we get a day that finally slows down, we're going to talk to Tyler Rowland from Locked On Titans about Demarcus Walker and Nate Jones coming over from the Titans. We're going to talk to Joe Marino from Locked On Bills about Tremaine Edmonds. And we'll have to talk to one of the Locked On Eagles hosts, Gino or Louie over there about TJ Edwards. And we'll get our sort of local experts on the Lockdown Podcast Network breaking down your new Bears players. So make sure you're hitting that subscribe button. Your subscribe button, you're tuning back in for that. And of course, you have to tune back in for your next opportunity to bear down.